Hey guys, welcome to another video. In this video, I want to talk about what kind of things you should take a look at when you're selecting a bank account in Germany because trust me, when I figured out the banking system in Germany, I was kind of in a shock for a while because like there were just so many different kind of things that were different in Germany than uh, in India. And the first major thing that I will just like throw it out there is like you have to actually pay the bank for keeping your money inside the bank account, which is completely different in the positive interest countries where you're actually getting interest on the money. So this is actually still a bit different in Europe. So for example, if you're keeping your money in your bank account in Estonia, you're getting the money on top. If you're putting the same in Romania, you're also getting that. But these are again countries which are like not yet like on the same like standard European level, like for example, Germany, France or Netherlands and so on. There were quite a few differences. I'm going to like kind of put everything here on the whiteboard and this is going to be well, the starting of maybe the whiteboard videos, just really like love writing things here, just keeps like everything super organized. So uh, hopefully you will like that too. Let's go discuss in the comments if you would like to have more whiteboard videos or just like the other normal ones. So let's go, let's take a look at the whiteboard and let's start going through the different points. First of all, what are the things that you have to take a look at? when you're selecting a bank account in Germany and then what kind of choices you have because as a student you still have quite a lot of choices but as soon as you're like working full time then it becomes a lot different so like in this one I'm going to like discuss both of the scenarios when you're actually just a student and are trying to figure out what kind of bank account you want to use or if you're a full-time working professional and then what kind of choices you have with you all right let's go to the whiteboard perfect so this is the selecting bank account in germany the differences right the, the first difference that i want to like really kind of um focus on is going to be the conto führung skepion because oh man i think this was the thing that i like found the worst in the german system because like why do you have to like kind of pay the bank money every single month so that they are like managing your things because this is like really not the system in India. And yes, it has to do with the negative interest rates in Germany, which is also like even more horrible. So in India, if you're keeping the money in the bank account, you're getting an interest rate on top. You're getting money added to whatever amount you're already having in the bank account. But in Germany, that happens rarely. Now, so like that is again the second point. But the first point is like most of the times you have to pay four to eight euros, sometimes even 13 euros. So like for my business account, I was paying 13 euros with Foxbank, which was insane every single month. And I was like, you know, this is way too much. And this is like really nonsense because every single time, whenever I have to get something done, I have to go to the branch and like fill out the paperwork and all sorts of nonsense. First thing, Konto Führung Skibion, bad. You don't want to pay somebody for keeping your money in the bank account, which is, yeah. I don't know like this shouldn't have been said but it is the case in germany so we have to like figure out a way to mitigate around you have like no interest rates like no to negligible because there are some bank accounts for example foxbank i opened my bank account with foxbank because well i wanted to be smart with money foxbank was pretty much the only bank in hamburg which was providing an interest rate a positive interest rate on the money that you're submitting up to a level i think 1000 euros or something and for students of course for us like it's already too much money like 1000 euros is fine it's not bad so i thought all right you know like any kind of like interest rate it's not bad let me just put the money there so that's what i did but for most of the other bank accounts for example sparkasse and others like there's generally no interest rate now another super important thing something that i've also mentioned here that these conto feelings give you on uh, the money that you're paying monthly to the bank account and the interest rate that the bank is giving you on the money that you're already having deposited in the bank account is different. So the policies of, for example, Foxbank in Hamburg is not going to dictate the policies of Foxbank, let's say in Chemnitz. It just doesn't work that way. So every single region even have their own rules, own pricing and that's why it is not very easy to say that hey all right just go with Commerzbank, go with Foxbank, go with Sparkasse or go with Deutsche Bank and so on like it generally isn't that simple so it is super important that you take a look at what kind of banks are available in your region and then decide from one of those depending on if you're getting a positive interest rate or if you're actually not paying any kind of money on your student accounts because these two things are super important right so we have that out of the way so afterwards we are going to then take a look at the next point which is like generally with these bank accounts you're not like receiving any kind of visa or mastercard 
which is again insane because I cannot even count how many times my Indian uh, SBI debit card saved my ass in so many different kind of occasions. For example, Alina and I, we were on a road trip in Denmark and we went to Copenhagen and then we wanted to put our car in a parking lot. But there you can only use Visa or MasterCard. And the problem with the German bank accounts is they have some kind of VPay. Well, VPay, yeah, I mean, but nobody else accepts it outside Germany. So that generally is a bad thing when they're having their own kind of, uh, you know, um, not Visa or MasterCard, but like some, some other kind of like VPay stuff. Uh, for the for the bank cards which can generally only be used with the ATMs in Germany so that is a bad thing and this is the reason like I marked here that Visa or MasterCard is super important because if you are going anywhere abroad or even if you're doing any kind of online purchases within Germany like either you have your PayPal yeah that's nice you can use sometimes Zepa uh, last shift if it is available with that kind of merchant but most of the times you do need a Visa or MasterCard and it is like rather important to acquire one if you don't have from India I mean I would still say like get one in Germany because it's just a nice addition you don't want to be paying these extra kind of forex charges every single time you're doing some kind of payment in Germany for any kind of like online purchases so this is something which also sucks for like most of the bank accounts in Germany that you are given some kind of VPay card and not like your Visa or MasterCard. So Dispo Credit is a feature when even if your bank account is having zero euros, the bank can essentially give you a loan on a monthly basis, but that loan is generally also expensive. Like you have to pay up to like 7% of the amount that is taken out after your bank has already reached the zero level. So this is an interesting thing if you really need the money, something that you can also like kind of get disabled if you don't want to use the Dispo Credit. What happens in that case is that, for example, a company tries to cut the money from your bank account for some kind of service or product that you bought, but then if the SEPA thing or like if the money uh, transfer did not work on their end, that they are not able to take the money out from your bank account, then they will charge some extra kind of fees. So like 10 euros, 20 euros, something like that, which is like not such a nice thing. So this is sometimes like kind of uh, makes sense that you have this book credit of up to like 100 or 500 euros. It's not that bad. Like I think this is something you can keep. But again, depends. Depends on your situation. If you are going under zero way too many times, then there is something seriously that you have to figure out with your finances. And we will talk about those things in the next videos too. But see according to your own situation if you would like to have the Dispo credit or not, right? So Dispo credit, essentially something that the bank loans out to you even when you have zero euros in your bank account. Then the fifth thing is that generally the online banking that I have seen with the traditional bank accounts is a lot, lot weaker in Germany. So this is not fun at all. Um, even I would say like the online banking of SBI sometimes is better than what we have seen with Foxbank. So Lena and I, we were both with Foxbank and whatever kind of experiences with, we have had, like essentially were with Foxbank. We were also previously with Postbank and well that started charging fees monthly. So like we went away from there and then we started with Foxbank because it was free for the time being. Well, and then afterwards it was also charging fees and this is the reason we then took the final step which I'm going to like now discuss afterwards but the online banking with Foxbank it's absolutely horrible um, you can't even sometimes transfer the amount uh, to some other bank account just online and you need to have this different kind of like chip this is called smart 10 and you have to like put your card inside and then scan the barcode and all sorts of nonsense and they just cannot make a decent app like all of these fintech companies all of these banks which are like opening up new they have a really strong app. They have like verification methods. They have two factor authentication and all of these things, which are like really nice. You don't need to have a separate thing to carry around and every single time scan some kind of barcode or like scan some kind of, you know, a QR code and things like that. This is something I find really horrible. So the online banking generally that you find with the traditional bank accounts is worse. Like I would say Deutsche Bank is still like better. Commerzbank is also like decent there. Spark as a Fox Bank, they are still like not at the level of, for example, N26 or Muniz um, in that way, or even Comdirect. Huh? So that is the story. So these were some few important points that you have to absolutely remember when you're like choosing a bank account in Germany, because it is possible that you come from some other country and then all of a sudden you're in Germany, you're trying to figure out some kind of bank account, but then you realize that, hey, they're not giving a visa card. And then sometimes you have to use a visa or MasterCard at times when you just don't expect it at all. 
For us, the horrible thing was that we parked the car inside the parking house. No? And it did not ask for the Visa or MasterCard there. But when we were actually going out and then we had to like pay for the time uh, that we had a car standing in the parking lot and was asking for a Visa card. And, and, and at that point, if I didn't have my SBI, this global Visa debit card and did not have the international transactions enabled, I have no idea what we would have done. So just things that you should like really remember when you're like, you know, figuring out what kind of bank account you would like to um, have here. Then you have a few choices as a student or even like as an employee, you can go with Foxbank, Commerzbank, Sparkasse, Deutsche Bank and DKB. Like these are the very standard bank accounts that you have. Like some of them I'm also going to link in the description so that you can take a look or also you can fill out the applications online if you would like to like shift from your uh, current bank account to some other bank account. Then the newer banks, which I actually like really love uh, and especially because they have a really strong app, it just looks beautiful. You have all of your stats in one single place. Whenever you're doing any kind of transaction, you will get immediate notification on your phone. So in case like your card gets stolen or something, like you will know if yeah, that person is using the card somewhere else. But it is definitely not bad to have like all of the list of expenses and incomes that you are having uh, in one single place. And it also shows you in a very nice statistical way how much money you spend for what kind of uh, category this month. So N26 is absolutely beautiful in that way. It's also like one of the oldest like digital banks, one of the most established digital banks, which is out there. Then you have Moniz, you have Comdirect. Comdirect is like, um, it, like a not a partner but like a daughter company of Commerzbank so this is also an interesting one if you're into like investing because Comdirect generally like doesn't have so much drama when you're like trying to invest in stocks or ETFs and um, index funds and so on that is the important thing um, DKB also allows you to do that with Shpaka said the it's a lot lot pricier so like I wouldn't suggest Shpaka if you also want to like invest in stocks or ETFs or index funds and so on but um, N26 works well because with N26 you can easily have your Trade Republic account and then you can transfer the money there and at Trade Republic you don't have any kind of you know uh, monthly cost when you're trying to do the trading with stocks and ETFs and so on. Previously we were using Foxbank but as long as you're a student like of course it's nice that you don't have to pay anything but as soon as I ended my studies it started charging me like 13 euros per month which was insane. Alina was paying around 8 euros a month which is also like not acceptable at all if you're paying like almost 21 euros every single month. This is the reason we shifted to N26. I have my business account, so like that costs like 10 euros per month, but it is still a lot, lot better than Foxbank because I can use the master debit card anywhere and it doesn't have any kind of Forex fee. That means um, here right now we are in Denmark and we have to do a lot of stuff to like bring Alina's BNB project into shape. So for those of you who don't know Alina, my wife, she bought this house and she has always had the dream of like having her own BNB. So like that's why we are in Denmark right now and trying to like fix the house. So whenever we are doing any kind of transaction, whenever I'm doing any kind of transactions with my N26 bank account, debit card, I'm not paying anything at all in Forex charges, which is like really nice. You see directly how much the exchange rate is going to be when I'm transferring money to some kind of, for example, business who did some kind of repairs in the house. So there I can also already see how much extra money I'm going to pay. And Foxbank was horrible in that way. Like I was paying almost like five to six percent of the entire amount on top which is insane but for example n26 uses transferwise which is built in the app you're just like paying very very less money compared to what you're paying with the traditional bank accounts so for the paid plans with n26 of course you also have a lot of nice benefits but as a student or a, or somebody who just doesn't want to pay the quantum fueling cpu you also have the free plan which is also very strong so I'm going to like link that in the description so that you can read the different kind of plans which are available with N26 and also then you can directly apply. It just takes like three minutes. I would definitely recommend this. Like I'm using it myself and I've like posted a lot of times on Instagram to use this. A few of my friends also like already shifted to N26. Alina is now with N26 with the free plan. I'm with the paid plan. So like we are using it in the way that uh, any kind of paid things or like the paid incentives we need we get that money transferred to my account and then you know we are using it so that essentially the cost of having one paid plan is divided by two this means like it's essentially that alina and i we are like sharing five euros and five euros per month costs together so economies of scale like you know always um yeah it's always nice to see that working 
So N26 is something I can recommend definitely even as a student if you're coming to Germany you just need your passport and the residence permit has to be in a card and like not as a visa stamped on your passport so they don't accept that but like just give it a try see if you like some other one Muniz is also a good bank account but I don't like the forex charges uh, and stuff there so the plan that I found personally the best for me was the N26 but it could really differ depending on what kind of city you're living in what kind of state you're living in maybe you have a really nice Fox Bank offer there maybe you have a really nice Sparkasa offer there so just like really inquire and keep in mind these five points like super important that you're not paying any kind of like additional monthly fee to the bank account that you're at least getting some kind of like interest on the money that you're already putting inside and then if you have some kind of like you know visa or mastercard available with that bank account that is also like super important i'm going to make a few more videos about the finances because i know it is super important and like people generally like discuss it way too less and especially for the international community in germany so yeah, I mean, there are a lot of videos that you will find in German, but of course, like you need to know German. I can watch them and like, you know, gain the knowledge from them. But for those of you who don't know German yet, because I'm never going to stop preaching this. You have to learn German if you want to integrate better in Germany, if you want to like really have a good and successful career here. So until you don't know that, um, we can discuss these things here. No? All right then, guys, thanks a lot for watching the video. It got a bit too long but hopefully it was uh, worth it for you guys the n26 link i'm going to put in the description along with the some other ones like the sparkas or fox and everything so that you can take a look i do recommend n26 because like after a lot of research like i came across it and i did not like decide to go with the other ones but of course like according to your own like uh, personal situation it is possible that you find some other bank account uh, more interesting for you so take a look and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.